introduced national road pricing. Nearly two million people signed a petition on a Downing Street website. The Prime Minister uh, says though he will continue with a planned pilot scheme around the country. Uh, let's now go to Telford. The petition organiser, Peter Roberts, is there. And in our central London studio, Tom Franklin. Tom is chief executive of an organisation called Living Streets. They campaign for better and safer streets. Uh, first of all, Peter Roberts, um, uh, I'd like to start with you. Uh, nearly two million signatures, was it worth it? Um, yeah, clearly it was worth it because it started the debate and people now know what road pricing is all about, or at least they will do in the next few weeks. Yeah, what do you think of the Prime Minister's response then via email? Um, I've only had a chance to read it very quickly, but uh, the government certainly aren't dropping the pilot schemes and I think that's a shame because the pilot schemes really are the, are the foundation to put the national road pricing scheme in place, uh, kind of like a Trojan horse. So I'd prefer to have seen them at least put on hold until alternatives have been investigated. Okay, so, so what, do you, what do you do next? Um, for me, I'm not sure at the moment. We'll have to wait and see. But um, I'm trying to sort of set up a website which will allow people to, to come and see what's happening and to follow the debate. Um, the, the, the link to that website can be found on the Downing Street website and the response from Tony Blair. So I hope people come have a look and see what we're trying to do and, and read the response that we can put on there. Tell us a bit about yourself, Peter. Who are you and why did you do this? Um, I'm just a, a guy from Telford, an ordinary guy. Um, I did this because I, I live a fair distance from my family and I, I think it would cost me a lot more money to go and see them. Um, I also think it's um, fairly intrusive for a road pricing system to work. I mean, effectively, if a road pricing system knows which road you're on, it has to be some form of intrusion into, into where you're travelling. I mean, it cannot possibly work unless it knows where you are. Even the London scheme, which is a ring-fenced ring fenced scheme, still knows that you're within that ring fence, it knows where you entered and where you left. So it, it, there's always some form of, um, of, of surveillance with a road pricing so, scheme. So it's not I just about the, congestion uh, or pollution or the environment for you? Sorry? It's not just about congestion, pollution or the environment for you. There's a, there's a bigger picture here. Absolutely. I mean, the, the congestion issue can be solved in many other ways. We, there's a lot, a lot of other things we can do before we need to look at road pricing. For pollution, I think that road pricing will basically push people off of the busiest roads where they're going to go around the, the smaller roads, down little yeah. country roads to be able to try and avoid the highest charges. Um, okay. If you look at the report that was done the other day on the news, they, the guy that did the highest mileage in the four litre car paid the lowest cost. So I don't think it's a very useful form. Yes, of I did see that. And it it depends on what hours you work and, all, and what you, roads you use. Yeah, very interesting there, Peter. I want to talk to Tom Franklin now. Um, Tom, do you think Peter has a point at all? Well, I think um, what it shows the number of people who have signed this petition is that it's potentially an unpopular measure. Um, but that doesn't mean it's uh, not right. Um, many of the people who signed the petition, I can understand why they don't want to pay more, um, but they'll also be concerned about global warming. And I don't think that we can seriously tackle global warming unless we're looking seriously at measures such as this. What, what about the other issue he's worried about? He's worried about the Big Brother aspect, the, the being able to track each individual. Well, I think we have to look at that, and I hope that the pilots will look at that. We, at the moment, there isn't a particular scheme that's going to be introduced that, that's the idea of pilots. I have to say that there's so much surveillance going on at the moment. Everyone who travels by plane, their details are recorded. Um, everybody um, who, come, as you say, comes into central London, uh, there's uh, the CCTV cameras there. There's, uh, there are large numbers of CTV, CCTV cameras on our streets um, already. It is an issue, um, but I think we have to look at that as well as all of the other things as well. And ultimately, at the moment, I think it is is just sort of too easy to simply get in your car and drive for those journeys without thinking about alternatives that's public transport but it's also walking and cycling you know at the moment um, you know it's too easy to simply get in your car without thinking about whether that journey can be walked or cycled but Peter, Peter you are you're saying you are thinking about those things of course I mean, at the moment, you're, we're paying nearly a pound a litre or 90 pence a litre for petrol, so clearly that's form of road pricing. The taxation on fuel is about 80%. So people don't just jump in cars because they want to go for a drive. They don't jump in cars because they want to pop round the roundabout and come back again. They pop it, They get in a car because they want to shop in, they want to go to work, they need to go somewhere. Well, the, the it, it's not, it's not a luxury. Are... These people that keep saying it's a luxury, 
It's not. It's something that's essential. And outside London, there is no public transport alternative. Well, there are a large number of journeys that could be walked or cycled that at the moment people are taking their car. Those, everyone knows those short journeys um, that people jump in their car because it's easy. And I think that road pricing might make them think twice. Obviously, there are many journeys that people undertake in their cars and they have to. But there are other journeys where actually looking at alternatives would help. And we've seen it in London as well. You know, 20% reduction in uh, car traffic at 72% in increase on the cycling as a result of the congestion charge and making our roads safer as a result of that. So it is possible. I think we need to look at better public transport, but we've also got to look at the other side, which is discouraging people to use cars as well. So, so Peter, I, I would think Tom Franklin thinks he's on the verge of a, of a brand new dawn and things are, you know, inevitably heading in, in the direction of, of people like him and the organisations that represent. Does it end here for you? Not at all, no. I mean, we've still got the, the democratic process in this country. If I think, isn't it, Tom, if, if he's right, then yeah, then people will vote for the government that actually wants to introduce road pricing. But if he's wrong, then people will vote this government out and any other government wants to introduce road pricing will suffer electoral suicide. And I'm sure in London, yeah, there is an argument for some form of congestion charging. But move outside the M25 just doesn't work. It's not an option. Okay. And what would you say to that, Tom? Well, I think that uh, we have to um, start facing reality, and the reality is we can't go on as we are. We've got to look at alternatives to the car, um, and I understand that some of that will be unpopular, and people will just have to look at um, what the consequences are of us driving more. Um, you know, I don't think there's one solution. I think it is about investing in better public transport and also in making it easier to walk and cycle. Um, but I do think that the government is right to start to look at those um, alternatives um, to um, discourage people from using their cars, however unpopular that is. And I think it's an honest government that faces up to those sort of issues. Well, why don't we just build more roads and take the cars away from the built up areas? That, the trouble is that, that in the past, what's that shown is that those roads very, very quickly fill up with more cars. And so we end up with more congestion, and more cars, and empty. we need to then build more roads to deal with that. Now, in the long run, that's not a solution. It just increases the amount of carbon dioxide which we're pumping into the air. It doesn't. No. No, that's, that's not true, because the, the new roads where they're built actually take congestion away from the roads surrounding them. So you can't say that. Where are all these new cars coming from? They don't just suddenly miraculously appear. Where are all the new drivers coming from? There's a limited number of drivers in this country, and that's remaining fairly static. Well, the, the so it, it's that, not that, really true to say this. I feel that congestion is uh, likely to rise by 40% over the next 20 years if we don't do anything about it. Um, the fact is that um, more and more cars are, are, are going onto our roads and being driven further. Um, and if there are more motorways and if there are more roads, then people will drive more. Um, ultimately, that's not a solution. You know, we've seen it. We've built more and more roads, and actually they're all as congested as they were before. Well, Peter and Tom, unfortunately, we've I've got to put the brakes on no both of you there. Um, we've got to leave it there. Thank you both very much.